Hello everyone. In uh, today's video lecture, we will uh, have uh, a close look at uh, how to generate a linear voltage sweep. So first we will discuss the general considerations, which means without taking any specific circuit, we will try to look at how a linear sweep can be uh, created from basic uh, principles of network theory. So, in this process, we will try to look at uh, two of the very important uh, sweep circuits. One is called as the Miller sweep and the other one is called as the bootstrap sweep. So, both have the common principle and uh, what we call as a general consideration and we will see how we will be creating a Miller sweep and a bootstrap sweep and what is the basic difference between these two. So, uh, please look at the left side of our screen. So, we will first quickly discuss the general considerations because we already have a good knowledge in network uh, uh, theorems, it is very easy for you to understand. Okay? So, whenever somebody asks you what are the general considerations for Miller and bootstrap time based generators, this is what you should recollect and repeat. <coughs> now, let us take a RC circuit. Any sweep circuit starts with a, a capacitor charging through a resistor to a voltage V. Now, we will assume that the voltage is constant at V and it is allowing the capacitor to charge through a resistor R and the time constant is RC. This we already know. Okay. Now, initially let us assume that this, this branch is shorted. There is no, no component here. Okay. Then what will happen? You have a voltage V, you have resistor R and you have a capacitor C returning to the negative terminal of V. So, what will be the voltage across the capacitor C? The voltage across the capacitor C will be increasing exponentially as we have already seen where Vc is equal to V into 1 minus E raised to the power of minus T by R into C. So, that was the expression. So, naturally the voltage here is not increasing linearly. It is not increasing linearly. So, when will it increase linearly? It will increase linearly when the current in the resistor is constant. Okay. So, this current in the resistor I must be made constant. Now, how do we make this current constant? One proposal or one suggestion, one idea is why not we introduce into this loop a voltage dependent voltage source. So, what is this? This is a voltage source. It is not an independent source. So, it is a voltage source whose voltage V is dependent on the voltage across the capacitor. So, this is the key point. So, the voltage across the capacitor if we call as Vc. So, if we connect, if we connect some circuit Definitely, it is not a capacitor or a resistor because it is a dependent voltage source. So, we know that a dependent voltage sources are usually made of active devices like a transistor or a FET or op amp. So, we will use some amplifier circuit here, some transistor circuit we will use here. How we use, we will see next. So, uh, in simple terms, now what we did is our objective is to make the current through resistor constant but here it is increasing exponentially. So, we introduced a voltage dependent voltage source here and this voltage we are making it equal and opposite to the instantaneous voltage across the capacitor which means the voltage across the capacitor x y this, this portion supposing it is increasing by 1 volt then what will happen here? Here also it will increase by the same amount 1 volt but in the opposite way. 
okay so that is why this is positive this is negative and this is negative and this is positive so what will happen because of that the any variation increase or decrease across c will be duplicated here across v in the opposite direction so the net result is both the changes will cancel both the changes will cancel so between x and z the voltage will be zero the voltage will be zero okay that is how we are going to design the uh, voltage dependent voltage source now let us look at the loop after having introduced now please understand this is a general principle we are not suggesting what type of circuit to be used here we are only giving the principle here what is the principle i want the current to be constant so the current can be constant only when this two are cancel okay so we are introducing a cancellation mechanism with a voltage dependent voltage source now let us try to write the kvl for this loop so what is the kvl for this loop the kvl for this loop is uh, this v is equal to ir okay so minus uh, the voltage across the, this thing vc and again plus v so the current in the resistor can be written as v minus vc that means this voltage minus vc plus v divided by the resistance r okay now when will this current be constant this current will be constant only when vc is equal and opposite to v so that is our main target okay now all of you should agree that from fundamentals this appears to be correct there is nothing wrong in what we stated now the question is principle is uh, given now we have to make the circuit so now how do we make the circuit that is what is our next problem and what is the current that is flowing through the resistor or through the capacitor for that matter that is equal to v v by r technically it will be equal to v by r the current going through the capacitor will be equal to v by r so because it is constant the voltage across the capacitor will be increasing in a linear fashion so let us look at that now when we give this when we give this suggestion to a designer the designer can come out with the different methods of generating the sweep and he can come out with different solutions okay now we will look at two such solutions now one solution you can look at the nodes here if we call this node as x this node as y and this node as z so let us call them as x y and z then we can say that uh, supposing i give the input between x and z i make z as the reference i make this point as ground i make this point as reference point then i give the input here because i want to make a dependent uh, voltage source no so this dependent voltage source has to be some amplifier some transistor circuit so that amplifier circuit will have an input it will have an output okay now the input uh, is given to x and the input is between x and z supposing i take the input between x and z and i take the output between y and z if i take the output between y and z then what will i get what will i get input is given between x and z so now if the voltage across the capacitor here is increasing here it is increasing like this the input is increasing then what will happen across v between y and z it will appear it is decreasing so what is increasing here will be decreasing but it will be a straight line it will be a linear thing so whenever we use xz as the input and yz at the, as the output in this type of uh, configuration we call it as a miller sweep so in this lecture we will continue to study miller sweep after understanding the general consideration so miller sweep means input is across x and z and output is across y and z and the current flowing through the loop is constant i 
so the voltage across the capacitor has to be linear because the voltage across the capacitor is cancelling the voltage across the uh, dependent voltage source. So, now because x and z is the input, what is the voltage between x and z? What is the voltage between x and z? It has to be Vc minus Vc minus V and V is equal to Vc. So, it has to be 0. X potential must be same as Z which is the reference point. So, XZ technically is equal to 0. Practically, it is not X is not connected to ground but the potential is 0. So, what do we call X as? We call X as a virtual ground. Why is it virtual ground? Because it is really not ground. It is not grounded. If it is grounded, no signal will come, no current will come to the capacitor. Current is coming, but the potential is equal to the ground potential. So, we call it as a virtual ground. So, Z is made reference. Input is across X and Z. Output is across Y and Z. And X is called as a virtual ground. So, I is equal to V by R. So, technically, between Y and Z, we will get a nice uh, decreasing, linearly decreasing sweep which can later be de, uh, converted into the uh, trace is there linearly decreasing, retrace is increasing. We will see that in the Miller sweep. When we come to that, we will discuss. Now, another designer can say, why should I take uh, this as the input? Okay, He will say that I will take uh, x and y as the input. The input is between x and y and the output will be taken between z and y. So, y is taken as the reference, y is taken as the ground and input is given between x and y and output is taken between z and y. So, when such a scheme is uh, introduced, so what will be the output? Output will be between z and y. Now, because z is positive, y is the reference point. So, because this is positive, we will get a positively increasing linear sweep. We will get a linearly increasing sweep. So, this type of uh, method is called as the bootstrap sweep method. It is called as bootstrap sweep method in which uh, y is made reference or ground, input is across x and y and output is across z and y and the current uh, still remains as i is equal to v by no change in the general uh, considerations so everything is same but if i take uh, in one way if i make z as the reference x as input and y as output it becomes a miller circuit or miller sweep i'll get a negatively uh, falling uh, decreasing sweep and uh, when i take a x as uh, input Z as output and Y as reference, I will get a bootstrap sweep. Okay? Now, in these two cases, just remember, we have to use a dependent voltage source and this dependent voltage source for a Miller sweep, it must be an inverting type because input here when it is increasing at the output, this must be decreasing. So, it must be an inverting type and it must be a high gain amplifier. Just remember that and uh, we will discuss why it is in another video. Now, it, now, is, now it is not possible to discuss that. We will discuss in the other video. So, the inverting and high gain amplifier is required as a dependent voltage source. So, the Miller sweep requires an inverting and high gain amplifier. So, obviously, a common emitter configuration is uh, most suitable in, in the case of Miller sweep. Now, coming to the bootstrap uh, sweep, we use a buffer to isolate x and z and it must have a unity gain. Okay? The gain must be unity. So, for this type of uh, circuit, we use uh, a common collector or emitter follower configuration. Okay? When we go to the bootstrap sweep circuit, we will understand it in depth. Now, in, in this lecture, having completed the general considerations, we will try to first understand the Miller sweep in the next video lecture, 
we will go to the bootstrap sweep in detail now the miller sweep circuit is shown in figure a on the right hand side here so this is the miller sweep a simple circuit in the textbook you will see a more elaborate circuit you don't have to really uh, remember all that because uh, if you know the concept correctly uh, your uh, explanation will be appreciated very much now let us look at this circuit so what is happening here okay let me first explain to you using only this circuit and the waveform and still if you if you are not understanding something i'll use the figure c and try to explain a few more important points otherwise this a and b should be more than enough okay let us start now in in the miller sweep circuit we we have a, a capacitor now this capacitor is obviously connected between the input of q2 and the output of q2 okay you can see the circuit here we wanted to take the output between y and z so you can call this as y and this as z okay so if you want i will try to put it here so let us call this as uh, uh, we'll use a red color uh, so that you you know the difference we will call this as a y i should have done this earlier but it's okay this is called as y and uh, this is called as a z here this point is called as z and we will call this as a x we'll call this as x now it is uh, clear now what we what we need to understand is this is the capacitor which must be charging and discharging so it must be basically charging to v v how it charges let us have a look now what is the resistor through which this capacitor has to charge now unfortunately we have two resistors here so one resistor is uh, rb2 and the other resistor is uh, r c but uh, remember the circuit here remember the circuit what is the input input is between x and z that means this is x and this is z so this is the input and what is the output output is between y and z so between y and z we are having this uh, uh, voltage the voltage across y z is uh, equal and opposite to the voltage across the capacitor across the capacitor okay and uh, obviously this capacitor it has to charge through rb2 to vcc we have vcc here we have rb2 and uh, this is the capacitor okay look at it that way now this is output y now let us try to understand what is the function of this q1 now q1 acts as a switch okay now whenever q1 is uh, on that means the input is high q1 will be on then this capacitor is uh, pulled to the ground so obviously no current will flow through rb2 to c so no charging is possible something else will happen okay now let us take the case where the sweep will be formed so how the sweep will be formed and the sweep is at the output here between y and z which is negative okay now let us assume a situation where initially okay q1 is on let us say q1 is on what happens when q1 is on so no current flows through the base after some time no current flows through the base of q2 and q2 collector current also will be zero and when collector current is zero for q2 what will happen to the current in rc that will also be zero so there is no drop across rc so the y has to go to vcc okay y has to go to vcc so y let us assume is at vcc you see here so this is vcc for the output starting point before the uh, q1 is switched off so before q1 is switched off this uh, uh, transistor this uh, uh, circuit b the input uh, is at zero or maybe positive and the output is at uh, vcc 
okay remember this point when this is vcc now we suddenly make uh, this voltage at the input go negative so when input goes negative what should happen to q1 there is no current flowing through the base because base emitter junction is reverse biased and what should be the collector current collector current also should be zero is it not collector current also should be zero now when the collector current is zero what you have to understand here is at this node there are two contenders for current from vcc so vcc is supplying the current through rb2 earlier this current was flowing through q1 okay most of it was not flowing through the base now this current has to flow through this capacitor c and also through the base both no not through q1 now will it happen immediately as soon as q1 is uh, off will q2 go into on condition immediately the answer is no it will not happen like that why it will not happen let us try to understand based on our earlier knowledge of a capacitor charging through a resistor to vcc now what was the original voltage at y before this transistor was switched off the voltage was vcc because q2 was off and the voltage here is vcc now what is the voltage here it is zero okay this is vcc okay and this is zero and this is vcc so what is the difference in the voltage between x and y x is zero y is vcc so if you look from this side you must say the voltage across the capacitor is minus vcc please note down somewhere otherwise you will get confused between x and y it is minus vcc that means what is the voltage across the capacitor here between these two points it is minus vcc point number 1 okay because this is vcc and this is almost equal to zero now when this q1 is cut off and q1 is cut off what will happen x is now disconnected from q1 and it is connected to vcc through rb2 okay now the voltage here is vcc this is rb2 the voltage here now because this is cut off the voltage here between this point and this point it is initially equal to minus vcc and now this capacitor will be free to charge through rb2 the current will start flowing like this okay the current will start flowing through rb2 for it the base also will require some current capacitor also will require some current but uh, what will happen to the voltage between x and z the voltage between x and z cannot cross vbe sat you must remember that point because there is a base emitter junction here it cannot cross uh, uh, vbe sat what is the meaning of that the voltage between x and z vb is at is around 0.7 for silicon so it is almost equal to zero the voltage between x and z is almost equal to zero so because between x and z it is equal to zero you you observe what happens here this between x and z so what is the voltage between x and z here it is zero because this is plus vc this is minus we see whatever change occurs in the capacitor the same change will occur across y and z but in the opposite direction okay now this is zero this is vcc so minus vcc now this point will try to change this minus vcc the voltage across the capacitor will try to go from minus vcc to almost 0.7 is it not so the voltage across the capacitor will try to increase between these two points from min uh, not between these two points across the capacitor it will try to increase from minus vcc how much will it increase it it has to go to vcc no so but already it is having an initial voltage of minus vcc so minus vcc once it reaches plus vcc what will be the voltage across that it will be zero okay so although the capacitor is charging to plus vcc 
because originally it was having a minus vcc the voltage across the capacitor will be equal to zero but the capacitor is actually charging that is the fun part here capacitor is actually charging but already because the other end of the capacitor is at vcc we are looking at this uh, funny situation okay now the voltage here please understand current is supplied by rb2 current is flowing into the capacitor current is flowing into the base okay but the voltage xz will never change the voltage xz will always remain at a, a near zero value so what should happen to y the because this voltage is increasing ultimately the voltage across the capacitor must be equal to zero so the voltage here which is minus vcc unless it becomes zero the voltage across the capacitor cannot become zero is it not now originally this is sorry this is plus vcc unless this becomes zero unless plus vcc becomes zero the voltage across the capacitor will not become zero so as the voltage across the capacitor which is minus vcc increases towards zero what we observe is the voltage between y and z which was vcc will start decreasing towards zero so that is what we observe in the waveform here so you have the sweep duration the sweep duration is ts and during this time the initial voltage vcc which was there at y that is linearly falling to zero during the ts time sweep time okay now the capacitor is charging to uh, such that the voltage across it is equal to uh, 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 zero so this is minus v this is vcc this is zero zero minus vcc this is going to uh, uh, vb is at so the total change is plus vcc slightly confusing but uh, try to uh, watch it again you will understand what i am talking so technically speaking our sweep is formed here so this is called as a miller sweep so the miller sweep contains the gating pulse here so at the base once this goes negative the transistor is cut off and the capacitor will start charging through rb2 so the time constant here is rb2 into c for charging for trace rb2 into c is the time constant uh, here but uh, for trace because the capacitor voltage is becoming zero from minus vcc we call it as a discharge okay this is slightly funny it is not charging we call it as discharge okay so that is the only confusion here so while the capacitor is charging we call it as discharge and uh, here uh, please remember that uh, this voltage will be linearly falling to zero up to the sweep now what will happen when this voltage is becoming uh, zero and the gate pulse is uh, uh, removed that means the input uh, is suddenly becoming positive or zero that means the sweep is over it has come from uh, vcc to zero now this transistor is suddenly going into saturation okay when this transistor goes into saturation okay so what is the voltage across this uh, capacitor the voltage across this capacitor is uh, zero agreed the voltage across the capacitor is zero this end is connected to zero x is connected to ground y is also connected to zero volts because completely discharged no so this transistor was in saturation and uh, uh, because this transistor has gone into saturation so this voltage is almost equal to zero so you can say initially it is equal to 0.3 volts vc is at now because this end is connected to zero this capacitor now is free to charge is free to charge to vcc through rc so now the capacitor will now start charging in the reverse direction so this is rc this is c like this it will be charging through q1 q1 is the uh, shorted uh, terminal uh, shorted uh, output so rc c it will start charging but what will happen at y 
this voltage will remain constant what will happen here this voltage will start increasing this voltage will start increasing how it will increase it will increase to vcc this will increase to vcc now obviously this resistor will be selected in such a way that uh, the charging will be done much faster in the reverse direction so during the retrace during the retrace we will use a different time constant which is rc into c rc into c and this is the time constant for which it is charging this is the time constant for which it is discharging so that is how we will get the sweep miller sweep this is called as a miller sweep now during the retrace time we can have a linear sweep or a non linear sweep that doesn't matter but technically it will be a linear sweep only okay now this basically completes our understanding of uh, the sweep uh, uh, miller sweep circuit okay now here important points to remember are if uh, we have a different sweep amplitude let us say it is not reaching vcc before that itself the gate has uh, uh, opened so then we will have a vs which is not equal to vcc so if vs is not equal to vcc because it's a linear sweep we can use this formula for calculating the time for trace which is equal to vs by vcc multiplied by the time constant uh, uh, for the discharge r b to into c so you can just do some math here you will understand and uh, for the retrace time uh, it is equal to vs by vcc into the charging time constant for charging time constant you have vs by vcc into rc into c for the uh, trace time vs by vcc into r b to into c okay this is when vs is less than vcc otherwise you know both are equal the sweep time will be equal to the time constant because it is linearly decreasing so this technically is our explanation of the miller sweep circuit and uh, now i will uh, take a small uh, extension of this lecture for some of you who are not able to understand that uh, when uh, this q1 is uh, off how the output y is decreasing so if you are having some confusion here i will try to use the miller theorem and make a uh, modification of this circuit as below and try to quickly explain to you not uh, completely i leave it to your imagination so what is miller theorem miller theorem states that if there is a component if there is an impedance in this case it's a capacitor if capacitor is connected between x and y this is an amplifier q2 then we can replace this capacitor with the two capacitors one at the input we call it a c1 other one at the output c2 and c1 magnitude will be c multiplied by 1 minus the gain of this that is vy by vx so that is what we have given here so c1 is uh, equal to c into 1 minus a because a is negative this whole term will become positive now let us concentrate only on this one i will leave this to your imagination so let us look at this one so what is the value of c1 what will be the value of c1 imagine the the capacitor here is a 10 microfarad okay and the gain of this amplifier voltage gain is equal to 100 let us say okay then what will be the value of c1 so c1 will be this is 10 10 microfarad multiplied by 100 plus 1 this is minus 100 minus of minus 101 100, approximately 100 into 10 so what will be the value of this capacitor this value capacitor will be 1 milli very high value it will be it will be a very high value so technically what we are doing is we are looking at a circuit which consists of a resistor and a capacitor connected like this now miller theorem no both are equal both are same okay now here we are this capacitor is a 10 microfarad whereas this capacitor is 1000 microfarad remember the difference so this is very high so r and c are connected like this to an ampli now this is a simple transistor amplifier okay now this amplifier which is in the active region now you see what happens q1 is a switch 
Now when I switch off Q1, when I switch off Q1, before earlier it was on. When it was on, this end is uh, 0, this end is also 0. Now when this is off, what will happen to this C1? This C1 will charge to VCC through RB2, is it not? RB2 through C1 and what will happen to the voltage here? Assuming this is removed, this is not there. What will happen to this voltage? This voltage will try to increase to VCC, is it not? The voltage here will try to increase like this. Okay, voltage will try to increase like this. Now, when the voltage at the base tries to increase, so naturally the current uh, drawn by the capacitor will start reducing and the more current will flow through the base. So, more current will flow through the collector and the corrector voltage will start reducing. Is it not? Because the base current multiplied by the gain will have a larger effect than the output. Here you can see what is C2? C2 is a 10 microfarad into 1 minus 1 by 100. So, almost equal to 1. So, it is only 10 microfarad. The output capacitor is 10 microfarad, input capacitor is 1000 microfarad. So, the effect of this will be more on the circuit. So, it is only to give you a clearer explanation. So, the voltage here, because you can understand uh, a RC circuit connected like this, I have given this. So, the capacitor voltage is increasing. So, when the base voltage is increasing, base current is increasing. So, naturally, the collector current must increase, the collector voltage must fall. Okay? So, that is how you can understand the sweep is reducing. So, if you are not able to understand in this case, because this is Miller's equivalent, this must convince you that yes, the output will fall when this is switched off. When Q1 is off, here the voltage increases, the collector voltage will start falling. Now, the same thing works here. Here, when Q of Q1 is switched off, the output voltage will fall. Now, using the general consideration, because XY to YZ they are compensating each other because between x and z it is equal to 0, x is virtual ground, current is constant. So, naturally y must be decreasing linearly with time. Okay? So, this basically completes the Miller sweep explanation. So, please go through the bootstrap sweep also. So, you will understand how these expressions have come. Okay, but remember all these expressions and before I conclude, uh, we need to compare the two sweep circuits and we must try to connect uh, these circuits in terms of performance with the errors in the sweep. Okay, so what are the errors in the sweep? We already studied the uh, sweep speed error or slope error, displacement error and uh, transmission error. So, we need to calculate these uh, error values. We, we will do one more video on that uh, and uh, then that will conclude our sweep circuits. Thank you. Have a nice day.